Hello, welcome back to Learning Curves and happy holidays. I'm so excited for this video today <gasps> and I'm so excited for what we're gonna be talking about. I love making special occasion food. I love hosting people over in my home and it had been kind of a tradition for us to have some family over for Christmas Eve for a special kind of appetizer-y dinner sort of thing. In hosting it year after year, there are a lot of things I've tried that have left me feeling really overwhelmed. I just wanna share with you my tactics to have both a very special dietary experience and not lose my mind. I've got a lot of make ahead options so I can cut down on the amount of time I need to spend in the kitchen on Christmas Eve itself and not necessarily spending all of Christmas Eve in the kitchen, although I might if I want to, we'll see. Anyway. I want to share with you the menu of what I plan to offer. I will link all of these recipes in the description box so you can cook along if you're interested. We'll break these into three categories. First, the savory options, then the sweet options, and then the drinks. So first, the savory. I'm vegetarian, but not everyone who's gonna be coming to our home is, so I'm gonna quickly run through the non-vegetarian stuff that we're going to be offering that my husband's in charge of because I don't know a lot about it. We always have shrimp. So he's gonna take care of that. I think he's just gonna buy like a pre-made shrimp platter that has to like thaw. We're going to have some sort of, I think it's a cured meat. I don't know the difference. Like charcuterie type meat, but not the fancy folding kind. Maybe I shouldn't have started with meat. Separately, I do make some sort of charcuterie board that doesn't include meat. Although I wonder now if the word charcuterie like means, like it includes, I'll have to look it up. <laughs> So in the past, I've purchased like three to five types of cheese and had them all out. And I've also purchased three to five types of crackers and had them all out. I have found having more options eventually makes you feel more overwhelmed and dissatisfied in the end because you feel like, oh man, I could have gotten something better. Could have had the best. This year, I'm going to keep it simple. We're going to have two to three types of cheeses, at least one soft, one hard, and then maybe a fun flavor. It'll probably be a cheddar, maybe a pepper jack, and a brie. Maybe a triple cream brie, because I really like the ones they have at Trader Joe's, and it's expensive, and I can't justify getting it other times of the year. And then I'll make sure that I get two delicious but traditional crackers, like a Ritz kind of thing, and maybe a thin wheat kind of thing. And then I might do another flavored fun cracker. And then I also intend to have some olives. I will have little kids at the table, so I wanna make sure that I have some that are pitted in case they're interested in that. I know both of my girls actually really like olives. And then maybe some not pitted fancier ones for the folks, for the parents. <laughs> These of course involve no prep time, just setting up the charcuterie board. You can find a million tutorials on Pinterest and probably YouTube for how to arrange a charcuterie board. Have I said charcuterie enough? Charcuterie? There's a super easy cream cheese horseradish dip that I got from my mother-in-law, which is literally just cream cheese, horseradish, and garlic salt. You mix it all up and you dip pretzels in it. It's so good and it's even better when you mix it a day or so beforehand. I mean, really even just a couple hours beforehand, but the flavor really permeates through that cream cheese. So that's something that's super easy to make, really delicious, big crowd pleaser make ahead our sort of entree as a nod to my sister-in-law and her Polish heritage and my husband and his Polish heritage and Pennsylvania-ness <laughs> is pierogi. In the past, I have pan fried these in butter. That's what I'm going to be doing again this year. But then there was one year that I slathered them all in butter and baked them and that was really easy. You just gotta pull them out and flip them halfway through. But you can't tell what filling is inside. So when you have a variety of them, you can't really pan fry all of them together. You have to pan fry the different varieties together. This year we'll have three varieties and I intend to cook them a few hours beforehand and then put them in a serving dish wrapped in foil in the oven so that I'm not working on them when my, the guests arrive. And then to sneak a few veggies in there, I'm hoping to make a veggie pizza shaped like a Christmas wreath. Have you ever had this where it's, crescent rolls, like you cover the sheet pan with flat crescent rolls, you don't roll them up, bake that. And then you get those powdered ranch packets and I like to mix them with yogurt, with whole milk, full fat, plain Greek yogurt, cause it's really thick, kind of like sour cream. Spread on the ranch dip and then you put on top finely chopped veggies. So a lot of times you'll do carrot, broccoli, bell pepper. This year I saw, I think on Pinterest where you can make the crescent roll in like a wreath shape if you just do red and green veggies and then you can use a bell pepper to make like a like a ribbon and you have like a little wreath and it also has vegetables on it and it's delicious 
and you can make it a little beforehand because it's cold. It's a cold dish and it keeps okay for a few days. So leftovers, veggies, holidays, not sugar. Next up are our sweet options. If I have all sorts of time, this is where I really want to spend my time. I have contingency plans for each of these. <laughs> First, I want to make an eggnog ice cream. I've made a custardy ice cream before, so this shouldn't be too different. I have an ice cream maker, and it's something I could do the weekend before with my three-year-old. She, I mean, while well, it's just churning, it's not the most fun, but it also is kind of interesting, and it's delicious. We actually, we have a kegerator. I'll link that video. You can get kegs of root beer, and I wish I would have thought of this early enough to get a keg of root beer. Unfortunately, we will not be having eggnog root beer floats, which I thought would be delicious, but I am going to make eggnog ice cream and then a hot butter rum sauce, hopefully. Something else I'm planning on making ahead, which is something I really like making, is caramel sauce. Once you've got a candy thermometer, it's like so easy. So uh, I'm gonna make a caramel sauce. And then what I'm gonna do, and my husband, this is the part where I lost him, is I'm going to make individual trifles. The reason I'm gonna make individual trifles is because we're going for things that last here. A trifle, once you like cut into a trifle, once you like scoop out of a trifle, it all kind of like, it loses the like beauty and the leftovers are kind of don't look great. But with single serve trifles, they stay pretty because you just eat them or you don't. So I'm going to make two kinds of trifles, but they're very similar, so bear with me. Okay, so you know when you get a tart, like a French patisserie tart, it's got pastry cream in there, or if you watch the Great British Baking Show, creme patisserie, or if you studied French for six years, creme patisserie, <laughs> pastry cream. So I'm gonna make some of that. I'd like to make some whipped cream, not too hard, I've made it plenty of times. And then I'd like to make these gluten-free brownies that I love from Oshie Glows from her second cookbook. And then I wanna make some really soft, snickerdoodles, delicious. So what I'm thinking is over here, we got brownie, and then we've got salted roasted pecans, and then we've got caramel sauce, and then we've got creme pat and whipped cream, and then you can do another set of all of that. And then over here, we've got snickerdoodle, caramel, creme pat, whipped cream. So you're using all the same ingredients, except for you've got nuts and brownie, and you've got snickerdoodle. So it's really just the cakey part that's different between the two, and I added pecans to the one. So if I'm down to the wire and I'm running out of time, I'm gonna kinda nix both of those trifle recipes because they are pretty involved. I've gotta make the caramel sauce, which I'm probably still gonna make beforehand. Uh, the whipped cream, the creme pat, the snickerdoodle, the brownie. If I have some time, I could buy the brownie and buy the snickerdoodle, and then if I have no time, I think I'm just gonna make a chocolate mousse, just to make a chocolate mousse. <laughs> like, that's not that big of a deal. It's also a single serve thing. I could buy some whipped cream to put on top of it, but I'm just making one thing instead of making four or five things and then layering them in individual dishes. <laughs> I hope I have the time for it though, because I'm really excited about it. Now let's talk about drinks. I have a few options here. I think I am going to serve a cold and a hot drink. They'll both be kid-friendly, non-alcoholic, but they will have alcoholic options that we can add to them. So I'm also gonna share with you some ideas that I had and things I've served in the past that have been successful, but that I'm not planning to offer this year because I'm trying to go less is gooder. This year, I'm going to do for the hot drink, a spiced apple cider that you could spike with spiced rum or brandy or bourbon. And then I'm going to do for the cold drink, that sort of typical winter punch. I'm planning on doing ginger beer, cranberry juice, and probably lime sherbet, and then some orange slices in there, maybe some cranberries for a aesthetic. And then in the hot apple cider, probably cinnamon sticks, maybe some orange slices again, actually. And then in the winter cold punch, uh, that can be spiked with really anything, but probably a clear liquor, like a clear rum or a vodka. Other options I've served in the past is hot chocolate. I've done a hot chocolate bar before. Again, that's kind of a lot of accoutrement. It was fun, but I feel like it ended up being pretty messy. And then I just had like cute little jars full of like different types of chocolate chips and candy canes and things that people like took one from. And it was mostly just beautiful, <laughs> but not really functional. The hot chocolate was delicious because you can set it all in a crock pot a couple hours before and just 
be done with it. And then of course for that, you can add in anywhere from Irish cream to vodka or maybe even a peppermint schnapps and do a peppermint mocha. And then of course the age old eggnog. Since I'm having the eggnog ice cream, I'm not intending to serve eggnog as a drink, but I love putting brandy in that. And a lot of people like putting whiskey in bourbon. That's it. I hope you got some ideas. If you make any of these things, please let me know. You can tell me in the comments or you can tag me on Instagram. I'm at learning curves lady. Happy holidays, happy baking, happy eating, happy gathering. If you're doing so, please do so safely. Take care. Thank you for watching. And I hope you liked this video. If you did, please like the video and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye.